Are you totally different when it comes to sex and copulation? Have you judged yourself out of receiving pleasure? Have you judged yourself into receiving pleasure in certain ways and excluded other ways? Would you like to know more about what else is possible with bodies? Would you like to create confidence in the bedroom and beyond? How has your sex life or lack of it affected other areas of your life? Everyone has the potency to be a sexual superhero. Get ready to listen, sense, and play with the sexualness that is you. Now, here is the host of The Pleasure Zone, pleasure diva and body whisperer, Milica Yelenich. Hello, beautiful people. Hello, sweet pleasure seekers. Welcome to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Yelenich. And tonight we have an interesting and strange topic. Um, it was actually inspired, uh, somewhat inspired by um, the fact that I was talking to one of my clients last week who had actually come in for not for depression but for a long-term illness. And um, I was actually quite curious about how long-term illnesses affect our sex drive and sex life because to me our sex lives and our sexuality and our sexual energy is actually super key to healing so when somebody comes in with chronic illness um, you know lots of things are curious to me and I will ask some strange and outrageous questions like excuse me I just burped but (laughs) I'll ask some strange questions kind of like hey when was the last time you had sex do you actually enjoy your body? I will sometimes get that intimate with people if the questions like that are popping. So it's um it's an interesting topic I found and I think I'll have a few on various different um you know health conditions, but this particular one I thought we would start with um is something to do with mental health cuz coming up in a few weeks is actually the uh, mental health awareness month and depression is particularly part of the mental health awareness month. So in uh, in line with that, we're going to be talking about sex and depression. So kind of fun topic, I think, because um, to me it's fun because there's so many people in the world who either they have depression and they lose their sex drive or they lose their sex drive and then they have depression. We're not really sure what comes first. So I think this is a kind of an interesting a way to start to unravel what is it and and maybe start to change it. So before I dive deeply into this topic, like jumping off of a high dive board, uh, I just want to remind you guys that on this show we talk about things that can sometimes be a little R-rated. So if you have uh, anybody, if you're listening and you've got this like playing loud in the background. I do bring up words that can be body-related, so if you have a younger listening audience around you, remember, you might want to uh, use your discretion as to the volume you're using when you're listening to this. And again, it can be a shot everybody wants to hear, so you might not want to have it on full open blast while sitting in public places. Uh, That kind of is true for all my shows, but... Um, I do feel like we probably will be talking about specific things like body parts in this one particularly. So if you have issue with that, just a fair warning, we probably will be mentioning all kinds of anatomy and uh, stuff that might actually have you feel a little bit uh, awkward if you are listening to this in public. So so one of the, one of the things that when I was kind of looking at some research regarding depression and sex was that um, some of actually the we'll just start with the idea that okay if you are depressed you've had been on medication right so a lot of times that is an assumption somebody says they're depressed there's an assumption that person's being medicated actually people are being overly medicated for depression or even medicated for depression when it isn't depression I uh yeah, side note, I think I was in my late teens and my mom had uh, had been in a relationship and she broke up with somebody and she'd gone to the doctor for actually for a pain in her leg. This is before she started doing the body work that um, she does that she taught me before she did the mitzvah technique. 
and she'd been to chiropractors and stuff, but it didn't really relieve it, and massage therapy wasn't doing a lot for it either. So she told the doctor all of this, and the doctor, instead of giving her pain medication, gave her uh, medication for having um, a mental breakdown and for depression. And she looked at the medication, and because luckily for her, she was raised in a home where the, her father was a doctor, and also in that home, there was talk, you know, there was talk of medications all over the place. So she kind of had some awareness of words. And if it wasn't for that, she would have easily ended up on depression medication for a sore leg. She wasn't even depressed. But it just had happened that she had gone to the doctor or had a doctor's appointment the day after she had broken up with um, somebody. And she was actually crying out of relief, not out of sadness. And that wasn't something the doctor knew how to relate to. The doctor assumed tears and pain equaled depression. We must medicate you. And that would have been a complete and utter disaster. So I'm so glad my mom had the awareness and she didn't she didn't buy into that. But I'm wondering how many people are actually on antidepressants that don't need to be, that there's nothing about the antidepressants um, there's nothing about them that requires antidepressants. You might be incredibly aware and picking up other people's sadness or people having body stuff going on. So, you know, if you are kind of being termed um, as having depression or being given medication for depression, maybe maybe you're not depressed. Depression, when you really look at it clinically, is it is actually a it's a chemical imbalance um it's a very different expression of uh outward expression of of uh who you are and how you behave than what a lot of us are calling depression so depression is way deeper than that and it's actually real depression um in my opinion is far more rare than what um what we tend to think it is uh, because everybody now under the sun is being termed depressed. I think really, truly, uh, we're really freaking aware and we're really, really aware of um, the sadness and the disconnect and the lack of feeling um, connectedness on the planet. And to me, that's truly where that that lies. So if you don't feel connected to your own self and your own body and you don't feel connected to others, What would sex be like when you don't feel connected? What would that act of copulation be like when you don't feel connected? Would you even feel like having uh, or copulating when you don't feel connected? I'm thinking probably not, right? So if if you have this disconnect and you're not feeling connected and you're calling it depression, what are your chances of feeling turned on? For me... When I feel the most turned on is when I feel connected to everything, when I feel connection to the trees, the water. Actually, a friend of mine, he just put this beautiful uh, like one-minute video out on Instagram, and he was on his boat and traveling around where his cottage is on the little lake. And my body was just like, wow, so freaking exhilarated and happy and like turned on just watching a one-minute video of shimmering water and trees and beautiful skyline, and and I just felt like the um, uh, the beauty, like I just my body was responding to the beauty and the joy and the nature, uh, and the the no judgment of it all. And I think if it, if I had that cottage, I would probably never leave it. Um, it's just stunning, and so. That sense of connection you can get when you are in nature or the sense of connection. Sometimes you even get lucky enough to have that sense of connection with people too. And when you have that, there is a level of intimacy that is just automatic. And when you have that with anything or anyone, can you actually be depressed? Depression itself, actually, when you think about it as a a word, and I didn't look this up, but I will during break, but... Depression as a word to me when you it's it's actually pushing down on something. When you go to the doctor, they depress your tongue with one of those sticks, right? It's actually the pushing down of something. So, if you are depressed, what are you pushing down? 
what are you actually withholding? What are you not acknowledging? So depression is an interesting word, right? We think depression means sadness, but I think actually when you look at the the real meaning of the word, um, to press down on something, when you really break down the word, are you feeling pressed down on? Are you feeling pressure on you? Or are you feeling um, like a sense of of um, any of that stuff where you are, are you feeling like where you're disconnected and there's pressure on you? So I'm just curious about that because if there is that, then there isn't a lot of sense of communion or joy or love or cuddliness or getting alongness, right? So how do we move away from or be in a different energy so that we don't actually have to be stuck in what the whole world is calling depression, which might not actually be depression, which clinically is actually something that is a chemical imbalance uh, where you don't feel joy. It's more like anhedonia, where you have an inability to feel joy. Um, Hedonia or hedonism is where you have an expression of joy um, in your body, also in your life. Um, hedonism, right, is that expression of joy and fun and uh, life and, and pleasure. And anhedonia is the lack of pleasure and joy. So depression truly is more like uh, anhedonia, true depression. But to have what what some people are th- thinking is depression is maybe a total and complete uh, awareness of a disconnect with them or their unwillingness because we're not ever truly disconnected but we have maybe not been willing to acknowledge our connection or or have our bodies sense the connection or have our beings expand to the place where we can sense that we are connected we're really controlling freaks sometimes and we will contract ourselves and we will not allow ourselves to sense and feel essentially pushing down on that depression, pushing down on ourselves and trying to contract ourselves is a great way to create depression. So if we were actually being the exuberant expression of ourselves, that's a, that totally full, huge energy, you know, infinite energy that we are, if we're just being like super out there, super expansive, super joyful, uh, you could find that it's a completely different, different experience. Oh, interesting. So um, in the chat room, my friend uh, and the producer for this evening, Christine, looked looked it up, actually, looked up the term for me um, for depression. And it's an angular distance of this, st- oh, I think we got a different one. The literal sense is the act of pressing down, the state of being pressed down is cool, right? That seemed true to me when I was feeling that out. Dejection or a state of sadness, a sinking of spirits. So that's actually a fairly old meaning uh, from the 1650s. And there is a a meteorological response, and I think that's interesting too. The angular distance of a star below the horizon directly has to do with um, pressing down still. So Latin word for pressing down. So it's kind of interesting that that they kind of reference in here that there is a meteorological sense, uh, lowering or reduction in economic activity as well. It can mean that, um, lowering of barometric pressure or a reference to barometric pressure. So if we, if the barometric pressure is going down, it's being depressed. It's funny because a lot of people think they have a lot of pressure on them. I'm depressed. There's so many pressures from everywhere. Um, what actually this depression meaning is saying is that the meteorological sense, anyways, is that barometric pressure um, is cha- it's just changing, really. It's just a reference to it. So what if it's not getting stronger, worse, or more intense? What if it's changing? And sometimes, you know, change for us, too, we just assume change is, like, scary or instating or huge. Or, and sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, it's just change. Just change. It's like if you change your underwear, is it is it a big deal? It might be if for you it's a really big deal if you've never done it before in your life, which, wow, it's kind of frightening. But if you've never changed your underwear in your life, it might be intimidating. If you have, it's not a big deal. And if you go kind of go through life as things change as frequently as your underwear changes, you might actually not get too 
as overburdened by it um, emotionally or feel pressured down by it or feeling like it's pressing down on you. So part of it is to um, start to acknowledge um, the change, right? So if you can start to acknowledge the changes around and acknowledge that you're aware of it and acknowledge that your body is probably responding to it, then maybe we can start to lift and lighten part of that depression. But again, there are people who do truly have a chemical imbalance and they require something that's going to help their chemical imbalance be balanced. So that's not a wrongness. It's just the way it goes. So I know that we have a lot to talk about on this topic because I've only just barely stepped into my uh, my point of view on depression. <laughs> Never mind how do we actually break free from depression and how do we bring our libidos back up start spiking them instead of tearing them down. So how do we get our sex drive back is really one of the questions I'm curious about because it, it is they do seem to go tandem with each other just like illness and sex drive seem to go down as well. So we're still alive, guys, and we can still have sex drives. Even if you're, if you're feeling depressed, what if increasing your libido could get you out of depression? So I'd like to explore a little bit about that. So I want to remind you that you are listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we're going to head off to a commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melissa every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Milica Yelich, and you, my friends, are The Pleasure Seekers. So thank you for being Pleasure Seekers and joining me tonight on the show where we're talking about sex and depression. Uh, there's a lot of different things um, that can affect, definitely affect you chemically, definitely affect... When I was mentioning before the break, you know, there is there seems to be this massive rise in depression now, there's there's a few ways where you actually where you can be clinically diagnosed as, as being depressed and it's not as simple as that you feel down or you feel sad. It actually requires a few things. So the uh the Center for Disease Control and Prevention called the CDC says that about 1 in 20 Americans over the age of 12 has some form of depression. And the National Institute of Mental Health reports a higher prevalence in women. Um, and actually, you can get it at any age. But uh, regardless, it's like the one thing that they are talking about is that 
in order to actually be diagnosed with like a clinical depression, you have to have a persistent depressive disorder that lasts for more than two years. So you guys, if you're even in it for more than a week or two weeks, there is definitely a way to get out of it. You can start to, for one, if you're truly, truly depressed and you really feel like there's nothing in your life worth living for, that's that's one situation that I would highly suggest either talking to a therapist, a counselor, a coach, a doctor, um, because at, the, at that point, if you really don't see any possibility, that's where you're going to need some coaching to get out of it, if you choose it. And if you're actually just choosing depression because depression works for you, that's your choice. But if you are if you are somebody who would like to get out of it and move out of it, um, and say you're a week or a month or two months or five months or even six months in, um, you're not c- technically considered having um, a clinical depression because they're saying that it seems to need to last for two years, which is kind of like two years consistently. So how do you get out of it? One of the things you can start to do is just make the simplest list under the sun. Um, if you like making lists, or you can verbalize it, or you can make a painting of it, or you can move about it, or you can talk about it. Um, But start to discuss the things, one thing, just find one, one thing that when you think of it makes you smile. So if one of the things that when you think of it makes you smile is little kittens with cute eyes, cool. That is one, and then the next day you might find one more thing that brings you a smile. And I'm specifically saying bringing you a smile because a smile actually kicks in um, certain hormones in your body. It's some, it, I don't have the technical explanation for it, but when you do smile, it actually brings in all those happy, feel-good hormones that start to shift you out of depression. So if you can think even for one minute about something that makes you smile, you can start combating depression pretty easily. And once you start to do that, you start to add those things to your life. You start to add the things that were like, you know, so the only thing that makes you smile maybe at first is a really cute kitten with cute kitten eyeballs. Cool. Utilize that as your tool. And then even if it's the next day, it's still that cute kitten, that's okay. Because probably, you know what, Within a week or two weeks, you're going to find that there are other things that make you smile. You might walk down the street and you might see a puppy or a mother and a child or you know people who are being kind to each other or a beautiful flower. You might see something that reminds you so you know the world can actually be all right, and you know it might just be your body responding by having a smile and I dare you to actually sense and feel that smile, not just in your face. So feel it in your face and not just your face. Bring all that energy through your whole body. There's actually a method, um, and I think it's a Tai Chi method, and I I say I think that because I was taught it in a martial arts class that um, I used to take, and it was just something that we did as part of our training, and it's called the inner smile. So you can actually go through and find that one thing even. Actually, I'm going to give you the side version because the version that I learned had more to do with um, really, uh, it came down to some orgasmic stuff as well. We might get to that on this show, but we're trying to keep it simple just to bring you back out of depression into a place where you actually can feel happy. So say it is kittens with beautiful uh, kitten eyeballs, and you're just thinking about them, and you just, you just, you know, you can either close your eyes or have it open, but you think about it and you breathe in and you breathe in all the energy of everything that's making you smile. And remember, put a smile on your face because that's actually going to start to change all of those hormones. And you breathe it in and you can, There's this is a very simple version of it, and just feel the energy circulate up and around your head and down your feet and then back up your legs and up and around and up your head and it like creates like a circle in your body so that you're actually breathing the joy of you know the sweet little kitten so then your body starts to feel that and your body starts to resonate with things that are joyful because our bodies whatever we're feeding it with our bodies will start to actually create kind of like a resonance to that so if you're feeding your body with joyful things your body is like oh cool i know that energy i'm going to have more of that and that feels really good 
um, if you're feeding your body with things that are um, pulling it down or contracting it constantly, it may take a little bit more um, choosing on your part to actually choose yourself into to joy or feeling happiness. Because again, those energies that are contracting or depressing uh, will attract more contracting and depressing energies. It's just kind of like the way nature works, the way the universe works. So um, in that sense, it's like those energies are familiar. They find each other. If, if you've ever noticed, it's like, um, you know, for example, schools of fish, they all seem to find each other. They're all kind of like the same amount of fish swimming together in a group. It's not a coincidence. They're all a similar energy, and they're working together. Our joy is like that, too. It's like a school of fish, and everybody, all these like joy feelings kind of collide together, and they're all swimming together. Our sadness feelings also have the same kind of uh, energies where they'll collide together. So, you know, we have a... We have these tendencies to kind of fall downhill when we have when we have depression. We tend to fall into it, and we tend to not see out of the bottom of the pit. So, one of the things is number one: look for that thing that makes you smile. Whatever it is, however small, minute, or huge it is, find it, think about it, write it down make a picture of it, do a movement of it, whatever it is. But remember to keep your body actually smiling. Smile. Even if, you're, even if it feels semi-fake, that muscle movement in your face kicks in some happy, feel-good hormones. So it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a mistake that smiling and joy actually can change a lot for you. When people are joyful, they tend to smile. You know, I've always heard the saying, if you're happy, let your face know it. It's true. If you are happy, let your face know it. And if you're not feeling happy and you'd like to change it, let your face know it. Because your body and that smile will actually start to change it. The irony of this is when you're smiling, you tend to be more attractive. And when you are more attractive, you might actually be pulling in, naturally being an energy pull, pulling in um, somebody who could become a potential lover. So smiling can be helpful in different ways. I mean, it changes the hormones, but it can also become like an energy pull. It becomes an attraction to uh, people. So if you are having this sense of, oh, oh, depression, like I have no sex life, I have no lovers, I have no, and you're really like going, going downhill on that, again, it's your choice to keep going downhill or find that thing that makes you smile Breathe it in, circulate that energy through your body all the way around until your body resonates with that joy happy. Let it shine out, let it go out, and then you get to be this attractive energy that's pulling people in. If you were in a room, for example, with 20 people, and 10 of them are depressed or looking depressed and not smiling, and 10 are smiling, and we're going to say that all of them have the same for you, the same uh, amount of good looks, you know, if we're going to quantify good looks. They're all they're all tens for you, but ten of them are not smiling and ten of them are smiling. Which are the ones you're going to be more likely attracted to? And if you're actually looking for people to be attracted to you, what do you think? Would it be that they would be attracted to you if you're not smiling or if you are smiling? Just something to consider if you're actually looking for dates or even, you know, when you're putting out profiles online dating, it's like, you know, people try and do these duck faces and they try and look sexy, but they actually look kind of almost like uh, serial killers because they got this serious look on their face, but it's kind of creepy. Can you just be you, be joyful, be smiling, see what that attracts? Because truly, when you are truly joyful and you're truly smiling, that energy can shine through pictures, through you know, airwaves through all of it. I remember when I first started my radio show and had to be scared out of my wits. And my um, my friend Christine, who is the owner and producer, she'd say, you got to smile. She'd send me messages. I'm like, how do you know that I'm not? She's like, you can hear it in somebody's voice. And it's true. It's actually really funny, but it's true. You can actually hear it on the airwaves when somebody's not smiling and they're in like, rah, mode. So, 
you know, wherever you are, whether you're on the phone, whether you got your picture out, whether whatever you're doing, bring that smile through because that is going to start to change all of those hormones and get you back on track, get your body back on track and get some of those happy feel-good things going so that your body can get turned on and it can turn on other bodies. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So we, um, I challenge you guys, here's a challenge, we're actually going to have a commercial break. And when we go to commercial break, I challenge you to stay smiling the whole time the break is on. Think of something that brings you joy. Keep that smile going. Circulate that energy in circles and see what occurs for you even in that short commercial break. So I want to remind you that you are listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. And we are going to be right back. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Melissa Yanich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MelissaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. And now that you're listening, you're considered a pleasure seeker, my friend. So that's pretty fun, right? Like, who doesn't want to be a pleasure seeker? So for those of you who don't know what you're listening to, you're actually listening to uh, The Pleasure Zone on Inspired Choices Network. And tonight's topic is sex and depression. So some of the things that... um, that occur are our actual depression, which we talked a little bit about where there's chemical depression. And definitely if you've got that going on and it's been lasting for over two years, or if you have bipolar or if you have postpartum depression or if you have psychotic episodes, definitely seek medical help. Definitely seek professional medical attention. I'm here for the people right now who might actually be not depressed but keep considering themselves depressed or who are super, super aware Um, and seem to have uh, categorized themselves as depressed for a really long time, but forget that they can change it. So by all means, there are people who are clinically depressed and and could use um, a little assistance. So this this is for people who, once you've gotten some assistance, we're going to give you some other tools so that you can start to move forward in your life and start to create your life beyond the medication and beyond... Um, judging yourself and beyond all of that. So um, for the people who have depression that I would categorize more as super freaking aware and feeling lots of stuff all the time, then we are about to change things. Remember, before break, I I challenged you guys to keep that smile going for the whole time during the break. And I wonder how many of you pulled that off. And if you did, good for you. So There's a lot of things that can also get people kind of um, worked up or depressed about sex, and some of them is when depressed about sex or depression and sex. You know, you can have both. Um, Some of the things that occur are that people can start to feel... um, Oh, well, there's a question in the chat room. Can sex take us out of depression? Yes, I was just about to get that. So sex... Sex in itself can bring in all those happy, feel-good hormones just like smiling. But a lot of people, when they are depressed, are not feeling sexy. 
They're not feeling like they can attract somebody. They're not feeling um, like they are... Uh, they don't actually have a sense of libido going on, and they don't. Their bodies don't feel turned on. Your body doesn't feel turned on. You're actually depressed, or like we were saying before, depression is pressing down on. So you might actually be withholding a whole megaton of sexual energy, but calling it lack of sexual energy or no expression of it, because we often flip things around and get completely confused and think that it's one thing, but it's actually the flip opposite of it. So what if you actually have tons of sexual energy and you do have a requirement to express it? Would that lift your depression? I know for me, it did. I had a number of years where I just felt absolutely no, no connection whatsoever, didn't want to feel it, also was being um, buying a lie by the person I was with at the time who was telling me I was the worst lover on the planet. And I bought that lie, and I was like, well, why bother even trying or doing anything if I'm the worst lover ever? Um, and I'm terrible at this, and I'm terrible at that. I'm like, why bother being anything or choosing anything? So, yeah, I got really kind of down. That's, that's a gift for when you choose a sociopath. You actually end up feeling really crappy about yourself. So if you are depressed, look around. Are you surrounded by sociopaths and narcissists? Just check. That could be a clue. So once you've checked that and you're like, wait a minute, I'm actually not depressed. I actually like life. I'm surrounded by narcissists and sociopaths. Fantastic. Change your scene and get some other people in your life. Um, So if you are pushing down your own sexual energy because you're buying a lie that maybe you're terrible, awful, or bad at this, because you have some kind of fantasy idea about what something is supposed to be, you know, literally switch it up. Start to ask, wait a second, do I have a capacity here? What if I started to just masturbate? Because if you can't find a partner to have sex with you right away, by all means, be your own partner. So what I know too is that when people are truly depressed, they tend to not even have a desire to masturbate whatsoever. Their energy is completely turned off and they've actually shut so much of themselves down and they've pushed so much of their energy away that they're not choosing self-pleasuring. Why would they? They're choosing anhedonia. They're choosing lack of pleasure rather than pleasure. So you can start to begin to have more pleasure in your body. And one of the simplest ways is to connect with your body. In my very first year of um, this show, I did a show called Fun for One. I think I did it in September of like 2014 or something. But if you look it up on Inspired Choice Network and you um, and you search Fun for One, I think you'll probably find the uh, the link to that show, to that archive, and you can listen to it. It's a great kind of self-guided masturbation, uh, sensory sensation. Um, uh, play kind of uh, exercise that I took everybody through, kind of more like a meditation than an exercise. So it's really getting you familiar with your body so you can wake your body up. And to me, that's one of the greatest things that we can do is start to bring pleasure to our own bodies because if we're expecting it from somebody else, you're going to just get really, really you're going to get really disappointed because you're going to be waiting a while and you're going to have a lot of expectations about the other person or about yourself or about how other things are going to be. So do it for you. And then when your body is super happy, fun, joyful, and excited, invite other people into your party. So can sex take you out of depression? Sex in a way that's actually um, allowing you to feel your sexual energy and to bring that up and to express it? Yes. And then sex with other people can make make your body happier if you definitely, if you have somebody that's uh, kind and caring and the energy matches what you're creating or choosing. Like if you actually want somebody to, to beat you and that turns you on and that matches what you're creating, cool. And that's actually a kindness for you. I know that's a whole other topic, but whatever it is that the kindness to your body and you're being offered that, yes, that can bring you out of depression. It can, if you aren't in a place where you feel confident enough, it can actually bring you into a really, it can sometimes actually bring you deeper into depression. You can feel 
connected so deeply momentarily that when that person is gone or pulls away, you feel um, so almost like your limbs got torn off. You can feel completely discombobulated. You can feel completely at a loss. And you can feel um, almost like, uh, well, for some people, they almost feel like they're dying because they feel so disconnected or a lack of communion with everything and everyone and, and with the person they're with. So the more you actually sense connection and communion with everything and everyone, you don't have, um, you won't have that loss or that depression that can occur after sex because some people get that even stronger. It's like, it's like being given a million dollars and having a million dollars taken away from you. It's kind of like a Wah! shock moment and it's a shock moment for the body. So if you when your body is actually feeling uh, when you feel confident and when your body's feeling happy and then you're choosing partners that are con- contributing to more joy, more happiness, more play, then, yeah, you can exponentialize that. That's where the energies add up and add up and add up and add up. But if you're buying that you're already lonely and sad and disconnected and if you have all of those underlying beliefs and if you have all of those as as the beliefs that are actually running your life and those thoughts are running your life, like I'm not connected to anybody, I'm so alone and I'm so depressed. If those are your, if that's the story you're telling yourself, then no matter who you're having sex with, they could be the kindest person on the planet, but once they're gone, you're going to feel sad, lonely, and depressed because that's your underlying story. So truly, in order to change all of that, you'd have to change your story, Uh, the story that you're telling yourself about who you are and what you're willing to receive and who, you know, all those things that would actually create confidence for you. That's why I start really, really simple with you, to tell you just find something that makes you smile because I really want to change from a hormonal um, perspective in the body and from a chemical perspective in the body because those smiles can actually change even if you do have a chemical thing, but some, some people prefer the medication. But it can start to change that chemical reaction in the brain really simply. So um, so for those, again, for those of you who remember keeping it simple, smiles, uh, Working on your own body so that your body feels like it's happy, joyful, turned on, excited, and um, and receiving. So I'd, what what I would like for you guys to get is that you can have partners that your body is happy to play with, and even when they're gone or they're not available, your body's still happy. It doesn't matter whether they're there or not. Your body might be craving them kind of in the way that you can like your body might crave salt, sugar, water, uh, champagne, or caviar. You know, your body might also be craving this person or that person's body as if it's like a mineral for your body. So you can check, is it you or is it your body? Does your body actually require their body almost like a mineral? If that's true and they're not available, then you can also just receive that energy into your body so that your body can kick that back in and breathe it in. It's one of those smile techniques again. So smile, think about the person, bring that energy through your body, and you can breathe with rhythmic breathing if you like to just circulate that energy in your body. And your body senses it. Your body can calm down. Your adrenals can go, you know, on a happy in a happy um, mode where they're not in fight or flight and they're just relaxed and they're receiving. And you can you can allow your body then to have more and more a sense of, of uh, joy and receiving, right? So that's really what we're looking for is how do we bring the bodies to a place where they're actually willing to have joy so that we can get out of depression, so that we can um, actually start to bring the libido back. And I know it sounds really simple and almost ridiculous, but bringing the libido back with a smile is is almost so simple that it's silly, but it's actually so simple that it works. And whether you're looking at your own body in a mirror and you have a smile or you have a thought that brings you a smile, it's that that's actually going to start to change so much for you. Seems ridiculous, but I dare you to try it and let me know how that goes for you because I know for me, that when I wasn't smiling, my libido was dead. When I started to smile, when I started to actually like stop buying the stories that I was crappy, and I started to get the, some of the magic of me, and I started to have some gratitude for things, and I started to actually receive, and I started to you know see what makes uh, what brings me joy, and I started to breathe that in. 
but then I started to change stuff. Then my libido started to kick in. Then I got it started to kick in like crazy. And then it was just like I was kind of like that person in the desert who finds water and they just start drinking. You know, like when you have a plant and it hasn't been watered in a while and then you go to water it and all the water seeps out? It can only contain so much at a time, right? It's just like, and then you got to go back and water it the next day until finally that soil can come back and get rejuvenated and actually hold the water. So, so my body was like that. It was just like flushing crazy, awesome sexual energy like mad through it for for quite a while. And and now it's like ah oh, I can re- I can actually retain and receive and uh, if I want to retain sexual energy I can and if I want to receive more of it I can it doesn't just have to like flip flip through and and drain out because there's so much of it I can't contain myself so yeah I'm giving you tools that work for me because I know for me that I wa I was in a place where I wasn't feeling it and I wasn't feeling like I had uh, neither a sex drive nor a sexy bone in my body. And I know it's possible to change it. And I know it's possible to change it for anybody, no matter what your walk of life is, no matter what your look is, no ma- none of it, doesn't. none of that matters because it's really about you connecting with your body and yourself and starting to have a lot more fun and smile with your body and yourself. So, oh, wow, this show is like flying by. I have a few more tips and tools I think I'm going to share with you guys, but I'm going to remind you that you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspire Choices, and we're headed off to our last commercial break. Many of us have created a lot of limitations around sex and what we are willing to choose. What else is possible beyond what we have already seen, heard, or thought of? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual revolution? Taking the taboo out of all aspects of sex, sexuality, and copulation by tuning in to the Pleasure Zone radio show with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow your to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Melitza every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. What if you really do change molecules by your interaction with them? What if the change you've been looking for is right before your eyes? What if the uncomfortableness that comes with difference could be fun? What if the closed-minded people of the world no longer determined our world? What if gratitude trumps judgment every time? What if your kindness healed the world? What if the earth is asking for your help? And what if you had the resources to give it? This is your invitation to step into something that Einstein, Marie Curie, Picasso, Da Vinci, Shakespeare, Aristotle all knew to be true. Hi, my name is Dane here. Thirteen years ago, I started to truly ask questions. Actually, I started to be the question, and everything changed for me. What if there are no dumb questions, or any question too large? What if you being you are the gift and the change this world requires? Is now the time? For more questions to create a change in your world, sign up for a free video series at beingyouclass.com. My gift to you, beingyouclass.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with body whisperer Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. Call 815-880-8255. That's T-A-L-K. Or Canada, 613-800-8736. Or you can Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email at MilicaYelenich.com. Now back to the program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Pleasure Zone. I'm your host, Melissa Ellen H., my sweet pleasure seekers. I have a few minutes left, so I just want to recap a bit. So number one, first, smile. Bring that smile through your body. Breathe it through. Circulate it through your body. Number two, have a little fun for one if you don't have a partner, and get yourself to a place where you're willing to receive from you. Enjoy your body. Discover your body. Touch your body. You have a body. Play with it. It's there for you. It's actually, you were smart enough to choose embodiment so that you could have fun with this body. And another one is, because we're working with partnerships and and sex, sex is more fun, can be more fun with more than one, right? So when you're having more than one, 
let's keep it simple and not make sex um, something that has to be intimidating. Because, like I was saying, sex can also create depression for some people. They get really bummed about maybe their um, their performance. So it goes depression and anxiety. Uh, like a, a performance anxiety can come along with sex or feeling like a disconnect when you don't have the confidence in your own self and body that you f- you feel like disconnected from people. So doing these things for you is really key. And when you do start to have fun uh, with somebody else, keeping it simple, remember, touch is so amazing. We know this. We know this from research with babies. We know that babies who are touched thrive, and we know that babies who are not touched do not thrive. Uh, are we any different? Not so much, my friends. Um, and for those of you who rarely get touch in your lives, you know, I really encourage you to find outlets and resources. There's so many great places. I know that, um, you know, some of the larger cities have things like cuddle parties or they'll have events where you can just go hug people because truly we know deep down that uh, hugs and touches are so key to our survival. Um, even for people who, for example, like my mom, doesn't really like hugs, but she will still request body work because uh, she knows deep down that electrical connection between two bodies is actually a huge contribution to bodies healing and having ease and relaxing and feeling like somebody's got your back. So whether the person you know has an aversion to hugs or touch, they still might be okay with some other forms of touch. So um, let them approach you and see what they're willing to receive from you. So there's also, um, you know, keeping it simple with touch. Is like it doesn't have to be direct sexual contact. You can keep it really simple. Touching somebody's hand can actually be an amazing way to assist them to have their body to relax. Or just holding them, you know, having somebody, you know, cuddle up on the sofa with you and watch a great movie. Uh, for, you know... It's funny, my daughter will, every day, you know, if we don't have our cuddle time, she's she's on me about it. And if I've gone away for a few days, she's, i got makeup time to do because she's like, I haven't had your cuddles in this many days and I need this much time. She's got to calculate it <laughs> down to the minute. Um, and I think if we could all be a little bit more like her and a little bit more demanding of what we require for our bodies, knowing what our bodies require for thrival and survival, oh, we would be a much happier planet, a much happier place. And um, acknowledging our bodies, our bodies would be so much happier too. So yeah, touch is very, very key to actually getting out of depression because so many people who are depressed are actually feeling really disconnected in general and not really socializing. A lot of people become a bit like hermits. And, you know, it's one thing, you know, there are magical moments when that when you are a hermit and and the FedEx guy comes to your door and he wants to get it on like in pornos, but it doesn't happen every day. It, it's never happened for me personally, but if it if it ever does, I'm sure you guys will be here to listen to that story. So, you know, the chances are lovers not going to just show up at your doorstep. You actually kind of got to get out in the world. And so one of the other things I encourage you to do is to actually find social environments where you can start being around people that light you up. And if you don't have a lot of social activity in your area, you know, and you've got to take a drive for a while to get in there, go for it. And if you, you know, if you need to uh, create an online group so that you can chat with people online via like, you know, Skype or whatever, these different um, face-to-face, like FaceTime and stuff, Whatever it is that gets you connecting with people, because the more you feel connected with people, honestly, the more communion and connection you have, the less you can feel depressed. So I want to thank you guys so, so much for listening, and I look forward to having you guys on next week. Stay tuned in and turned on. Thank you for choosing to listen to The Pleasure Zone. Melissa Yelenich will return next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.